Hello and welcome to 7th Gamers with Cenaris. Today we are playing The Novelist. This is a game by Kent Hudson and it is a story about the decisions you make. An interactive story though. This isn't going to be like one of those graphic novel interactive stories. Hopefully it'll be... Hopefully much more interactive than that, but... Unless... Um, I've already gone through and tweaked all the settings in here, so... As you can see there's a decent number. But, um, yeah, let's jump right in. Go with stealth, because I'm pretty sure that's the default setting. Ooh, tutorial. This is it. Wow, look at this place. Still can't believe the deal we got. Where's my room? Right up there, buddy. Mr. Kaplan, welcome to your home for the summer. We're very excited to have you. It's one of our most popular properties, and I'm sure your family will have a memorable visit. We have booked you through August 31st. Your security deposit has cleared, and our cleaning service has freshened everything up on Saturday. You can buy groceries at, Mount in, at McClendon's in town, and if you'd like to eat dinner out, there are quite a few restaurants on Meridian Avenue, just off Fairview. If you have any questions, or if you run into any trouble at all, please don't hesitate to call. Pete Fuller, Hanniger Rentals, Sydney Bluffs, Oregon. I can possess lights. At least they're nice enough to give me enough light fixtures to work with. We'll be back in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Pretty straightforward. I guess that's a chapter. Writer's block. I can't believe I just wrote that. Writer's block. There, again. Those two words are apparently the only damn thing I can write. I don't think it's been this bad since high school. Mr. Holder's class, an essay about Faulkner. Dan Kaplan, little-known author of Tramer's Way and Windsong, has run out of steam. Closed my eyes last night and saw a literary register article about myself. And that was the first line. Paul wants three chapters next week, and so far I've got 2,000 words so sloppy I can barely read them. I cannot blow my schedule. Paul said Grofield's been very clear about what comes next if I keep slipping deadlines. Why did this happen as soon as we got here? This was supposed to simplify things, but so far it's been nothing but staring at a blank page. <sighs> Maybe a walk will help, or a long drive, or a drink.
There's moments I'm happy I have surround sound. Do you think coming here will help? It has to. Do you think coming no. here will help? That doesn't help. Can't go back and forth between them. Darn it. Tommy rode into town with me today. He saw some kids his age playing on the swings at the park, and I could tell he wanted to go play with them. It got me thinking. Did we swing the pendulum too far just to get him away from those bullies? Kids can bounce back quick sometimes. What if this is the worst thing we could have done? Then he asked how Daddy's book was going, and without even thinking, I said, Great, my man. Felt awful right away. It's a white lie, sure, but why not be honest? When he was younger, he was just a bundle of physical needs, but now he's like a mental, emotional sponge. He's around Linda and me all the time, and I can see him changing every day in a thousand small ways. That scares the hell out of me. What am I teaching him with a white lie? Hmm. Hey, Mommy. Ooh. Remain undetected, earn additional opportunities. Vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom. Hey, Mommy, look at this. Ooh. How's it going, Tommy? Pretty good. Tab to see progress, escape for the help screen, and I think we've done a good job of putting on happy faces for Tommy. If he knows there's something wrong, he's not showing it. We told him this is just a fun family vacation, and he seems to like it here so far. But this might be it for Dan and me. Neither one of us has said the word yet, but I know it's right there under the surface. We've been dancing around it. I can't even bring myself to write the word here. Writing it would be almost as bad as saying it, because once it's there, it becomes real. A thing we have to deal with. I'm not ready for that yet. We agreed to make this a fresh start. I meant it, I think he did too. Now we just have to treat each day like a new beginning. Me too. Me too. Me too. I promise. I promise.
Aw, oh, him and his dad. Are there any other kids? We'll have to find out. Search the house for more clues. Mr. and Mrs. Kaplan, I hope this reaches you before you leave for the summer. I know we went over this in my office, but I think Tommy is a wonderful child, and I'll feel better putting my recommendation in writing. Children development develop at different speeds, and Tommy shows no signs of a serious learning disorder, so the most important thing is to be patient and supportive. Make sure he does his reading exercises each day in a calm, loving environment. Make sure not to show disappointment when he struggles, which he will, see at, which he will at first. Show encouragement when he succeeds, as self-confidence is critical at this age. If he fails to make progress with the exercises I've included, you may want to take him to the local pediatrician for further recommendations. Hope this is some help. I look forward to seeing Tommy this September. Mm, I've discovered enough to find out how they want to resolve this chapter. Kid's more observant than he lets on. Pew. Pick up more canvases. Art store anywhere in town. Galleries or studios. This must be hers. To his room. Barb, how are things? Is school still taking up all of your time or is anything new going on? We've been up here for a week or so and I can already tell it's going to be great for painting. There are hardly any distractions and this house has a room they called the conservatory in the brochure which really just means it has a lot of windows. <laughs> Whatever they call it, it's a great space for working. The second floor blocks most of the northern light but I'll manage. I took Tommy down to the beach today, and you should have seen how excited he was. I wish I'd brought my camera. He kept looking back up at the house like he couldn't believe it was so small from down there. He seems to have taken to this place really well so far, which is such a load off our minds. We didn't know what to expect, but so far, so good. Anyway, let me know how things are going. Yours, Linda. There's a book down. Ah, it's her diary. Diaz. Alice, Alice listens in on the phone call. Problem. Ruined sympathy for Alice. Solvable? Probably not. Too cheap and easy. Scene at the lake? Alice sees them there. Could definitely work. Come up and for Scott. Alice stays innocent. Sarah sees who Scott really is. Yeah, I think that works. So that might be his. That's eh, a bathroom. Hmm. 
What in the... Alright, where'd it go? Uh-oh. Right, where'd it go? <laughs> what the hell? Maybe over here. Oops. Okay, so don't let him see me. Got it. Focus and just start. Again? I just fixed it. Paul, good to hear from you. Listen, things are taking a little longer than expected. I feel good about this one, but I haven't quite brought some of the threads together. It's just an execution hiccup, not a lack of ideas. This is the most complicated book I've ever tried to write, and let's just say I have a newfound respect for guys like Dickens and Joyce who can juggle ten threads at once without getting lost. I'm figuring some of this stuff out the hard way, I guess you could say. Anyway, the outline I sent you is still good. Those are still the beats. Those are still the themes I plan to explore. I'll keep you posted, Dan. Trying to find her. Uh, darn it, there's an object in here and I want to look at it. And then. That's huh. hers. What if I just wait if they'll leave? Can I see? In a little bit. It's such a crazy thought, the three of us all alone in this house all summer. I never thought we could afford a place like this, but the price surprised us both when we saw it. I wonder if there's something wrong with it. Maybe it has a raccoon problem or a toilet that backs up. Guess we'll find out soon enough. Oh, and I'm painting again. I got set up today. I felt a buzz right away. So much time to work. I haven't had a space like this in forever, probably since I left the studio. I went straight into a new piece today, got lost, looked up to see it was two hours later. I think this new one has promise, though I still have some rust to shake off. Speaking of which, I'm going to go check on Dan and see if his new office is doing anything for him. He's pretty frustrated, but he has to figure something out soon, or this place won't be any different than home. Hmm.
see if the notebook was in their bedroom. his outcome. Hmm. If they're asleep, that means I don't have to worry about light fixtures bouncing around. to go her compromise explore the house There's even a way I would have seen that. Uh, yeah, I suppose there was. At least they're nice enough to position the light fixtures in a way you can actually bounce between them. Desk of Harold Baxter, January 16th, 1948. Sitting in the kitchen, drinking coffee, admiring the view, I simply don't understand it. Who would want to see this every morning? That appears to be the great question of 451 Timberline Road. I slept very well last night. It's a good thing the previous owners left the house furnished. It's just about as quiet as anywhere I've been. The only sounds today are the ocean and a few birds. After I finish breakfast, I plan to begin my inspection. Later. I was inspecting the upstairs walkway to make sure the railing was sturdy when I saw something odd downstairs. I'm not sure I can describe what it was, and I've already talked myself halfway out of thinking it was anything at all. Probably just a trick of the light coming through those big windows. Huh. anything else in here to find. That's kind of funny, though. 1948. I wonder if this game's set in current year. That would mean I've been haunting this place for 70 years almost. That's a long time. Dan in a flash. He'd written down an idea in an old notebook before coming to the house. Had somehow fallen behind the desk in the bedroom, and though he had no clue what gave him the idea to check there, he found it just the same. Instead of relaxing with Linda or playing with Tommy, he sat down at his typewriter and wrote for hours. It gave him hope that the change in scenery was working. The next night, Linda decided to have the bottle of wine herself after giving up hope that Dan would take a night off for them to catch up. She was a glass and a half into the bottle when he surprised her by coming down to help her finish it. And though they didn't get a whole night together, it was better than another evening apart.
Dan's mind was Elsa when Tommy tried to get his dad to play Racing Roger with him. Linda found Tommy trying to play the game by himself after dinner. She sat down and played a few games with him to cheer him up, but she could tell he really had wanted to play with Dan. Hmm.